Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. I hope everyone's having a beautiful day today. Um, obviously, this intro is a little bit different, <laughs> a lot of it different than usual. But um, I went to load in all of my footage this evening to edit, you know, tomorrow's video. And it occurred to me that one of the files is completely missing. I have no idea where it went. I don't know if it is corrupt, if it ran away, whatever. But I sat on it for a second and I realized that I didn't want to scrap the entire video, like the three hours of footage that I had, um, just because I didn't have a good intro. So I'm just going to, you know, stop on here really quick couple of seconds um for those of you that are new here hi what's up make sure you subscribe before you leave i put up three new videos a week monday wednesday friday usually right around 7 7 30 ish a.m my time here in good old northern michigan actually you know what too i should probably mention today's video if you didn't didn't see it in the title the thumbnail um we're checking out some new drugstore makeup we have a ton of goodies we've got the new l'oreal powder foundation we have some new stuff from flower beauty milani um just you know a bunch of drugstore brands i'm super excited i picked some of it up from ulta um the l'oreal powder came from amazon and I even got some of it from the local Walgreens. So there's a good assortment in here. And uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, make sure you subscribe before you leave. If you like the content, let me know your thoughts down below on all the drugstore makeup. If you like these videos and oh yeah, <laughs> the biggest thing. Hello. Don't forget Paige. Um, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you go and follow me over on Instagram. I'm still trying to hit um, 10,000 followers over there. And I actually put, um, <laughs> I put up a reel today. If you don't follow me, you guys, I put up a reel today um, of me singing or well, kind of singing slash makeuping to Tenacious D. And when I tell you it is worth your time, okay, I put up so much content over there. Um, we have like makeup reels, makeup IGTVs, makeup inspo photos, plus size fashion, all of that in the feed. I post several times a week. And then also in the day to day, if you're into like the behind the scenes, you just want to see me hang out with me a little more. I post a ton of like unboxings, um, little mini get ready with me as I talk about makeup updates, stuff like that as well. Again, just kind of always happening day to day. We do polls. I ask you guys what you want to see over here. Um, there's just a bunch of always revolving content. So make sure you're following me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. Everything will be linked down below. And with that beautiful people, I think that is everything. I'm going to go ahead, put the phone down and let's get into the video. All right, you guys. So I'm just going through and kind of surveying what we have here. And I'm just going to give you a heads up. Today's video is going to be kind of funky in the way of um, testing products, because I, normally when I do these, if you're new, like to my first impressions, I try to leave, like, say if I'm testing out, you know, for today, for example, I'm testing out this new skin tint foundation, whatever. I try to leave like the primer and the powders and other things the same. That way I can get like a really good feel for how I feel about this one specific item. But for today, because I'm going to be testing out like a plethora of new things, it's just more laid back. Um, I am going to be splitting my face and using these two new primers. These are both new primers from NYX. This is the Marshmallow Primer and then this is their Bright Maker Primer. So I'm going to do one of these on each side and then we'll play around with this. And then also for concealer, because I mean, why stop there? I also picked up this, um, this concealer from Flower Beauty. This is their Light Illusion Full Coverage Foundation, and I have this in the shade Ivory L 0.5, and I remember this is a very, very full coverage foundation. It's more hydrating on the skin, but I remember testing this out a long time ago. I just can't remember what I think of it, and so I thought for today, seeing how, you know, we have a skin tint going on, why don't we piece in with this, kind of work on the coverage, build it up to medium, and just get a feel for all the things, and, you know, just kind of play around. That, that's kind of the game plan, in case you can't tell, is uh, just kind of haphazard, chilling out, seeing what's going on, and now that we know that, let's Let's go ahead and start getting into these. I'm going to go in first with the Bright Maker Primer from NYX, which is orange and appears to have, is that like shimmer? Oh, it definitely does have some shimmer going on here. Oh, wow. You can, you can definitely see it. Um, oh, has a little bit of a a little bit of a smell, like kind of kind of like a honeydew smell. I'm not mad at it. It actually smells kind of nice. It looks like the kind of uh, primer that's going to give you like a light radiance underneath because it has like that built-in shimmer. But I really like the fact that when you are, are just like looking at it applied, it doesn't look like shimmer. It just looks like really nice glowy skin and it actually sinks in really, really nicely. All right, so on the other side, I'm gonna take, as per <laughs> we already discussed here, I'm gonna take a little bit of the Marshmallow Primer. Ooh, it smells good. Oh, it smells kind of like, kind of like a cookie or kind of like something with a little bit of vanilla in there. All right, let's go ahead and see what you got to offer. <laughs> you guys, maybe it's supposed to smell like marshmallow. <laughs> I'm like, I can't quite put my finger on it. I think it's supposed to probably smell a little bit like marshmallow. You know, scenes how that's what it's called now. Um, but this one, I can't remember specifically 
what it was supposed to do. I remember when I saw it over on Trend Mood, I was very excited. I feel like it was supposed to be like a light smoothing kind of pore filling thing. Oh, you guys, I can actually see a very big difference between the two. This is very interesting. This side right here where I just went in with the marshmallow stuff, uh, I almost called it marshmallow fluff, um, which is delicious. But on this side right here, like right in my more textured area, it actually looks very, very smooth. Like I don't see anything emphasized. Everything looks really nice and even. Whereas on this side with the, um, with the glowy shimmery product, Primer, I can definitely see a little bit more texture, but it is also a lot more glowy because obviously that's the point of the primer. Okay, so I'm not mad at either. This is fantastic. Let's move on and pick up the Milani. This is their Glow Hydrating Skin Tint, and I have it in the shade 110, and which is fair to light, and it says this is 29% 20 squalane and electrolyte and coconut water blend. Oh boy. If you have an issue with coconuts, I wouldn't go there. Um, it says for sheer to light color. Coverage, melts into skin for a naturally dewy glow. Powered by 29% squalane, powerhouse ingredient. It locks in moisture and prevents hydration loss. And then glowing enhancing ingredients. It has the electrolyte and coconut water blend and vitamins C and E. Very interesting. Okay. For, the, for those of you that are curious uh, what we're getting here, it's going to be like a hydrating kind of skin tint. And it does come with ooh, one fluid ounce. Good. It's like a standard amount of product. And I think for today, because like I said, we're going to be uh, messing around with a bunch of different things here. I'm going to take some of this by itself so we can see what it looks like, get a feel for the coverage and all of that. And then we'll go in from there and kind of, um, add in the other products, the concealers and whatnot. And I'm just going to go in and apply it with my hands a little bit here, kind of press it in. And then I'll go in later more than likely with a sponge and kind of smooth it out. Okay. So first application, just kind of looking at it. I really actually enjoy this. I think that, um, obviously it is on like the very, very sheer end of coverage. You're not going to get much out of it, but I really appreciate the way that it does even out the redness. Like you can see on my skin, especially cause I have more like cystic acne kind of skin. You can see that I have very, very red like large and in charge like discoloration on my face but I really like that with this you can kind of see it like blur over top of and kind of um help smooth out the appearance of the lighter redness that I get like up in this region right here from acne scarring and whatnot and I really like too that in addition to that it's um kind of helping to illuminate the skin and it's giving it like a really nice lip from within look regardless of primer and you know what too I just want to see just because I have to you know satisfy my own curiosity here I want to see how much if any you can build this um, as far as like the coverage goes, or if it just pretty much stays at like a light, a light kind of coverage. Oh, you know what? That actually does build a little bit. I definitely agree with the bottle. It says that it's more of like a sheer to light coverage buildable. And I definitely think, you know, that's very accurate. I don't think it builds much beyond a light coverage. All right. So as per usual on my channel, I try really hard to give you guys like the up close and stuff. So I apologize for being like right up your nose here, but are rather putting you right up my nose. But I wanted you guys to get a shot of what this coverage looks like as far as the texture and all of that. Um, up close before I go in and start messing with it with the concealer. And I gotta say, I actually really like it. Like, I don't have complaints. I mean, obviously, it's not like the full coverage or anything. But as far as the way that it's sinking, it's settling, it looks very nice, very natural on my skin. And I like the fact that when it settles in, it doesn't, like, cling to or, like, emphasize my pores, like, especially up on my nose. That's something I always have issues with when it comes to, like, CC creams. And because it, it seems like all, all the, the color tends to want to settle into, like, my more porous areas or, like, right around my mouth. And I like that with this one, it just has like a nice evening effect over it. And it just looks really, really pretty. Again, more of like a going out. Or actually, you know what? We're going to play around with this a little bit today too. This might be a nice light base for like a powder foundation even. Interesting. We'll be testing that theory out here shortly. Uh, but I really, I like the way it looks. So far, so good. Just wanted you guys to have a shot of it, you know, just by itself in case you were only interested in it like as a CC cream or a tinted hydrator type deal. I just wanted you guys to have all the information. And now let's get into concealer because I love concealer. All right, so as I said before, this is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. And I think, actually, hold on. Let me grab the packaging here. It had more detail. It says it is a weightless formula and it is crease proof. Okay, those were, those were the details. And it is in the shade what did I say? L.5 Ivory. And I actually really like this packaging. Here we go. It's got like a nice long kind of doe foot situation. Oh, wow. Very creamy. Oh, wow. That's actually a beautiful coverage. Ooh, that's pretty. Also, is this okay? Why is my color changing? Hold on. Let me let me move it back out. So hopefully that's a little bit better. 
I feel like the lighting in here is awful because it's winter in northern Michigan and the lighting really is awful. But my goal with my videos is never to be perfect, you guys, and, and truthfully, I don't think they ever will be because will I ever have the right setup? I I honestly don't think so. You know how I look at YouTube, like, and I'm, I'm not even saying this to be, like, facetious or anything, but the way that I look at YouTube and makeup and my channel and stuff um, is that, like, when it comes down to makeup and makeup application and, and all this kind of stuff, there are a thousand channels you can watch. Hell, there's thousands, plural, of channels that you can go to if you want, you know, perfect lighting, if you want perfect technique and perfect everything. There's so many people out there, right? Um, but when it comes down to, like, me and how I do it, um, I don't focus on that stuff for my channel. Like, yes, I try to make it as good as I can and I try to make the lighting decent and, and all of that, but, like, I, I feel like you can have all of that on other channels, but you can't have me on other channels. So if you like me and you vibe with my personality, um, then I love that and I think that that's awesome. But, like, I have spent so long, like, I, guys, I wish that I could tell you, this is getting a little bit, a little bit deeper than I meant to. Um, by the way, this color under my eyes is beautiful, but, um, a little bit, you know, deeper than I'd normally go <laughs> this far off the bat. But, like, I spent so long on YouTube, so, so long hating my videos. Like, I, I mean, obviously I love them and I love doing my videos, but when it came down to the production end, I spent so long, like, hating the quality and hating the color and just, like, hating so many things about it. And now it's like, I, I realize so much, like, my channel has continued to grow despite all of that. My channel has continued to have more comments and more people and more interaction and more sharing and, like, more Instagram followers and stuff like that. My channel and my stuff has still continued to grow um, d in spite of me, you know, not being perfect and not being all the things I think I should be. And so, like, one day it just hit me, Paige, like, people people still love you because of you and because of what you put out. They don't come here just because your stuff is perfect or just because of lighting. Um, because, obviously, if that was the case, like, you wouldn't be growing. And I know it sounds weird, but, like, and I hope it doesn't come across as, like, selfish, but I just spent so long being like that that one day I realized, like, I'm not going to sacrifice my happiness or my creative enjoyment. I'm done sacrificing that because I can't be perfect. Like, I'm just, I'm over it. The way, really quick, too, I'm just gonna go in here. This is uh, not new. <laughs> this is something I've loved forever. This is the the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. It's in the shade 05 Fair. And I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna pack that under the eyes and through the T-zone as per usual here. Oh, and then sometimes you make a very big boo-boo and you accidentally set the big old Hulk wrinkle. You see this wrinkle? <laughs> you see her right there? Um, we call her the Hulk, that big mega wrinkle through the middle of my forehead. And I accidentally just put powder all up on her and didn't set it first. Oops, I didn't mean, or I mean, I set it before I pressed it out, like before I got rid of the wrinkle. Um, that's my bad. So we're just gonna go over top of it with more powder and you know we're, we're gonna see if we can fix it later oh shoot i have cream products oh you guys i just forgot how could you let me forget you know what that's okay i didn't powder over my cheek yet it's totally fine totally fine all right so obviously i went ahead and i got the t-zone all set down and now i'm just sitting here looking at my cream blush options because just just like with the primers i have multiple ones here i picked up two from flower beauty these are their new gel crush lip and cheek tints i have them in the shades what is this strawberry crush and blackberry crush and then i also have from milani this is their new supercharged cheek and lip multi-stick and this one is in the shade 110 110 the same shade that I have the foundation and that's weird and what does it say here it's just a multi-use luminous gel stick for your chicks that <laughs> for your cheeks and your lips, for your cheeks and lips. And then it also says, what do these ones say? You'll crush on this multitasking wonder. Sheer pigments blend beautifully for an instant burst of hydrating color. Lips and cheeks are left with soft, long-lasting, dewy flesh. So basically these are gonna be the exact same thing. They're supposed to be hydrating on the skin, a nice little pop of color that you can use on your cheeks, your lips, whatnot. And I think what we're gonna do, first thing first, okay, let's, just, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I wanna swatch them both. And I'm gonna go in with the one from Flower Beauty. Ooh, that feels really nice. This is very much like a, a gel, like lightweight texture, just like it says. Very, very, very light berry fragrance. Like I can, I can barely detect it, but it is very nice. It's not like overwhelming, fake, you know, no, nothing like awful in that respect. And then let's go in with the other shade. This is Blackberry Crush. Ooh, also very pretty, just slightly darker. All right, so next up, we're gonna get into the last one. Ooh, satisfying. Ooh, satisfying when you peel off that little curly cue. I love it. Um, but this one, just so you guys know, if you notice in the packaging that it showed up, it looks a little bit wonkalicious here. Um, that is because I, I think it like popped out and slid around like inside of the container. Uh, or maybe, maybe it just melted a little. I don't know. But let's go ahead and take a little color. <gasps> Ooh, that's really pretty. You know what's so funny? Like looking at all three of those next to each other, they all look like they belong together. They have like very similar finish, the level of pigmentation, everything is very even. Um, 
Um, I do think the one from Milani, though, looking at them up close, I don't know if it translates, but the one from Milani does have more, like, color, more opacity to it with application than these two do. Um, just, you know, something I'm noticing, but as far as everything else, they look very even, very nice, very hydrated. And I think I'm actually gonna start off with this Milani one. I'm just gonna take the butt of my sponge here and go in with a little bit of it. This is how I apply, like, any cream product. This is my preferred method. I'm just gonna take and very lightly just kind of pop that on here just for a nice little light flush. And I'm just kind of taking this and lightly popping it like at the front here and pulling it back. And I actually really love that color. It's super beautiful. It has a lovely, lovely amount of hydration uh, because it's not like sitting on the surface and like looking sticky or tacky. It's actually just like settling in and uh, it's not really messing with like the foundation or the concealer at all, which is really nice too. A lot of times with formulas like this, that's a problem that I have. And that just looks really, really pretty. I like it a lot. All right, now moving on to the other side, I'm gonna take the darker of the Flower Beauty ones and I'm gonna just take a little bit of it on the sponge here, just like I did uh, with the other side. And because this side is a fair amount darker, I'll definitely have to be um, mindful probably with evening them out. But I'm really interested in the texture of these. Oh wow, those, those colors are very different. All right, so I'm looking at both of these just, you know, next to each other. We have the Flower Beauty here, we have the Milani over here, and I'm actually really impressed with how similar these look. Like, the, the pigmentation when I swatched them, you know, I noticed that the Milani one looked a little bit more intense, but once everything is applied, they both have the same amount of not only the hydration and like the look and the feel and the way that they press into the skin, but even the opacity of both tends to, you know, look very, very similar from one side to the other, which I really, really like. All right, now at this point too I'm just gonna go ahead and like wipe off these crusty <laughs> these crusty busty ass little lips I'm gonna go ahead and start setting the rest of my face and for that I do like to use a powder foundation which is of course where the L'Oreal one comes in this is the new L'Oreal infallible fresh wear foundation powder and I'm using this in the shade 20 ivory and you know something this just made me think of it something I get asked fairly often is you know Paige why do you go in and um why do you play around with like cream products and stuff if you're just gonna put powder over them like they do kind of cover up a a lot of the work that you did. And for me, I think that the answer to that is multifaceted because whenever I'm doing videos like this where I'm just testing multiple things, I'm testing the formula, I'm testing um, really just like the application, how it feels and stuff like that. Again, just very, you know, blanket kind of first impression. Actually, while I'm talking about this, I'm gonna go ahead and bronze here. This is the Pure uh, Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer in the shade Light. And uh, I'm using this because it was the one on top. I actually use this, I think I use this in my testing uh, Taylor Wynn's favorite, which if you didn't see it, I'll link it up here. For me, with, um, you know, the creams and the powders and whatnot, I just personally love the way that everything looks when at the end of everything, like after my full face is done, I go in with setting spray and I start to really press those layers together. I just really love the way that it looks. The way that, like, my powder blush melts into a cream blush. The way that my powder bronzer melts into a cream bronzer. It just helps kind of, like, sculpt my face and make it look that much more, g give it that much more depth, if that makes sense. Also, really quick, after that, I'm gonna go in with this powder blush. This is from Catrice, and this is their um, glowing multicolor blush box in the shade 010 Dolce Vita. And I'm taking that, which by the way, I talked about this in, I think it was like testing new drugstore makeup. I can link it up here. It was it was another one of these videos that I did like a week or two ago. Um, and then I'm using that with the BH Cosmetics. This is a number three brush. And this was out of their holiday holiday brush collection or something. I did a whole video um, on these two, well, not on these specifically, but testing holiday kits, which I'll link up here. Okay, and from there, just really quickly, I'm taking some of my Lift and Luminate powder. This is just gonna sit on the face while I do the brows. And uh, this is in the shade Light. It's a beautiful, beautiful brightening powder that also helps to just kind of lightly shape out the face. Okay, and then from there, like I said, we're gonna move on to brows and just let that sink into the skin. And for this, I actually have two different brow products. I'm very excited. We have the Fiber Fix Brow Gel. This is from Flower Beauty, and I have this in the shade Brunette. And then also brand new from NYX, this is their new Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. And this is also in the shade Brunette, so we'll see we'll see how these look together. All right, so this pen from NYX is actually very, what I would call flick friendly. Like it has a nice amount of movement to it. It's not um, overly like rich in color. You're really gonna be able to build it up, which I love. And then looking at the Flower Beauty one, I actually think this is gonna work good too. It has a nice 
little spoolie. It's not too big, not too small. And I'm actually gonna go in with this one first, the Flower Beauty one. That way I can lightly shape out the brows and I can actually see where I need color. Definitely a very wet formula. Like I'm noticing that it is flicking all over here and it's flicking up front. So be mindful with this as you're using it that uh, it will be a little bit messy. If you have too much product on the wand, maybe make sure that you scrape off the excess. But the actual color, the application is good, and I really like the, um, the application with it. Like, it's doing a beautiful job filling in my brows. That's really pretty. Let's go ahead next here. I'm just gonna start shaping out with this little NYX pen. Ooh, this is, ooh, I like that. I like the color. I love the amount of the payoff that you're getting. Like, it's very easy to go back over it. You get, like, that nice bushy brow look. Very nice individual strokes without it being like super hard to control. This is really good. All right, so really quick, while I was off of camera finishing the brows, I did go ahead and dust off the, um, dust off that number seven powder. And I also noticed that right around here, my face is starting to look really, really dry, like really dry, crusty, cakey. It's, it's just not looking good. So I went ahead and I sprayed my entire face with a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray. And this stuff is an absolute miracle worker. Not gonna lie, this is one of the only times that I have sprayed that stuff that it hasn't helped. And I think if I had to put a reason on it, um, and again, obviously first impression, but if I had to pick something, it would be a mixture of the Light Illusion Concealer and this uh, this little guy right here. And I say that because a lot of times um, when I use like glowier products like this or like the Light Illusion Concealer, stuff like that, stuff that is like designed to look very nice and very hydrated on the skin, um, when you try to go in, at least in my experience, and put powder on those, sometimes you can have a really bad fight there between the glowiness of the product and the powder, like they kind of repel each other. To me, it's not a big deal, like, if it happens, because the way I look at it, this is how I wear my makeup. Like, I have to set with a powder foundation, and so I have to test it to know if it's gonna happen, to know if I can wear it or not. And it's just, like I said, it's not the fault of the products at all. It's just, it's just the way I have to wear it. All right, so next up, we're gonna be getting into eyeshadow, and this is actually a new color icon palette I picked up from Walgreens. This is by Wet n Wild, and I don't remember which one it was. I actually just ripped off the little, the little tag that was on the front, but uh, if I can figure out which one it is, I'll link it down below. But they just came out with, I want to say, like four different variations of this, something like that. And I thought this one was super beautiful. Obviously, it's the more neutral one. Um, and this is uh, just, it really spoke to me, especially this color right down here. It almost looks light enough that it could be like a high, oh, like a highlight shade. I bet you I could, oh my God. You guys, that is one swipe. Hello, hello. This is so beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and swatch some of these. This one is this gold shade right here. It's kind of like a gold, ugh, it's kind of like a gold glitter. It feels a little bit hard. It actually has a beautiful amount of reflect. Okay, very nice. Guys, these feel so nice. I'm so impressed. Okay, I'm gonna do one on the thumb too, just cause why not? I'm gonna take this deep brow. Oh, <laughs> Oh my God, that is beautiful. Like color, texture, 10 out of 10. Like it is 100% rich, opaque. Oh my God, you guys, these feel amazing. Okay, let's go ahead um, and let's start putting some on our eyes, shall we? Shall we? I think we shall. So first things first here, I'm just taking a little bit of the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. Uh, this is in the shade number two. They did send this to me in PR, but uh, I have purchased it before. I really like it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a shot of these under eyes, bitch. These are looking, oh, so, so rough, like right up in the crevasses. It's not a good look for me. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's let's go ahead and put some eyeshadow on, shall we? Let's just focus on the positive. And uh, for this, I'm gonna be grabbing, probably actually just leading in with that shade I swatched, that one right in the middle, because it's so gorgeous. I think we're actually gonna lead in with this somewhat clean brush. This is a Morphe M452, and I'm just gonna dunk right in. Ooh, wow, she's got got a lot of something something to work with very rich in uh, rich in payoff has a lot of kick so be mindful but the shadow like the uh the color of it the payoff looks gorgeous so i'm gonna take some of this here and just start kind of packing it very lightly up onto the outer v and then kind of pulling it over that is such a beautiful shade it has like this really nice amount of warmth but it also has like a Kind of like a warm tone, but like it has this undertone of cool to it. It's just really, really pretty. I like it a lot. I was always a really big fan too of the original color icon palettes from uh, Wet n Wild. I talked about them a ton when I first started my channel. I just, I always felt like for the, the price you were paying, like the quality was so good. And I always really loved the color stories too. All right, so from there, I'm gonna take this shade on the end, this lighter, it's kind of like where beige meets bone colored shade. And I'm gonna take that and use it to blend out this upper area right here. I, I 
I don't really need a ton of it, but I just want to soften that color as it meets the brow bone right there. Just a little, little bit, nothing too crazy. Almost like a like a light buffing in of that color. Just a little bit. God, that's that's actually, the way those pair is really beautiful too. I like that a lot. Okay, now from there, same brush, I'm gonna dip into just a freckle, and I mean a freckle, of this deep shade right here because, girl, she is potent, and I want just the tiniest amount. And I'm gonna take that onto the outer V here and use it to just ever so gently kind of deepen up that little socket area right there. Just blend it very, very lightly down and then the excess kind of into the crease. I don't want the color to reach all the way through. I just wanna keep it nice and lifted right there. Just very light. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna switch over, I think, to the shimmers because I love where we're at with the depth on this eye look. And I'm kind of torn. Actually, you know what, you guys? I think I just figured it out. I'm gonna take this shade right here, that light, bright one. I'm gonna take that here just on my inner corner. I'm not gonna lay down any glitter glue or anything, which normally I would. But um, for today's look, I don't want it to be like the only star of the show. I wanna make sure I go in with this glitter as well. Um, it's not even like a glitter. It's more of like a chunky shimmer. And so I wanna take this one first and I'm just gonna lay it down all the way like up here into this inner V right here this inner corner and I'm gonna take it and kind of pull it all the way up into this orbital bone just to help open up that whole area and then I'm gonna take a clean finger and go in with that more like chunky shade this one right here um, it has a harder press on it so it does feel more like a glitter but it's definitely yeah I actually yeah I don't think that would qualify as a glitter I would say it's just like a chunky shimmer but I'm just gonna take some of that and kind of lightly tap it like right in this area just for more of like a like a, a light shimmer that way it's not as rich as these other shimmers it's more of like a, a half shimmer kind of situation and I'm just taking and lightly kind of patting and pressing that one all over this area and then lightly fading it out into the outer V like that and just kind of going back and forth, fading the two together. That's actually really pretty. I do think though, I mean, as far as the shades go, this one, this chunky shade, it's really, really pretty, but I don't love the fact that it's not really like committed to one side. Like it's not a glitter, it's not a shimmer, and it does have more of like a hard, hard press in the pan. So it's difficult to get payoff. So if I were you and you were gonna use this shade, I would definitely keep in mind, this is gonna be more of like a, a topper, you know, glitzy kind of shade. It's really pretty, but it's not gonna be like your standard payoff. That's for sure, but it is, it looks really, really good okay all right so really quickly here I'm just gonna spray my face down this is the morphe continuous setting mist and that's just because I'm gonna go in with this shade right here out of the palette that light shade this is on the BH4 out of that same kit and I like spraying my face down anytime I'm gonna go in with highlight I feel like it just gives me a nice little light grip for everything to stick to and so I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of that Ooh, she's actually quite nice Let's take some of it. Can you guys even see this? I never know when I go to this side what you guys can and can't see. But let's just take a little bit here. Ooh. Ooh, very pretty. All right, so overall, not looking too shabby as a highlight, which is impressive, because I feel like a lot of times, and I don't know if I'm the only one that has this, but a lot of times when I'm using um, uh, an eyeshadow as a highlight, I feel like it tends to look a little heavy or like it emphasizes texture, because the actual consistency of an eyeshadow tends to be a little thicker naturally than a highlight. And I like that with these, like it did kind of sink into the skin. It doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks really, really good. All right, so next up, just to give me kind of a once over really lock everything in here I'm going to use the Milani supercharged revitalizing face mist I also just got this I think from Ulta and this says what does it say here it is a weightless hydration with an invigorating citrus scent hold on hold on here let's let's check it out oh nice mister oh it definitely has a oh ooh, okay <laughs> it, has, it definitely has a citrus scent but it's not like actually you know what that's very interesting. It's not like an overwhelming, like, fake citrus. It actually smells like if you peeled a fresh orange, how you would have, like, that smell on your hands. I know that's weird. Actually, you know what? Pause. It's like, hold on, I've got, I've got it now. The If you were to mix a fresh orange or fresh citrus with the Hall's Defense little cough drops, how those ones are like the, um, like, there's the orange, the lemon, and the grapefruit. The grapefruit's the best. Okay, I'm sorry, but it just is. Uh, but if you were to mix, like, those two worlds, that's the level that I'm getting from this. Like, it has a sweetness to it and it's very very citrusy but it also has like a like a soothing quality to it I actually I gotta admit I really like the smell okay let's go ahead and let's give our face a little spritzy spritz actually let's take the glasses off then let's do it those poor things get hit with more setting spray Ooh. 
Okay, so the spray definitely is a little bit more wet on the skin than I'd anticipated, but it's not bad. It's a very even mist. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Do I think that this is gonna make any difference? Absolutely not. Okay, I think that right now my face is so far gone that it wouldn't be fair to judge the spray based on how things are looking uh, because it's just not looking good. But I am gonna try one more thing. This isn't new. I tested it out in like testing new e.l.f. makeup. I'll link it up here. If I have links, if not, everything will be down below. But um, this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of it here on a big old fluffy brush. And I've been using this. It's like a really, really beautiful, finely milled powder. And uh, I've been using it when I've noticed, like, I, you know, I have issues with smoothing. Kind of like if you've been here for a while, how I reach for the, like, the hourglass ambient lighting powders, how those just have a beautiful way of, like, settling into your skin. But also, um like lightly diffusing, kind of lightly blurring and buffing. That's what I've been reaching for this powder from e.l.f. for. And so I figure, you know what, while we're here, we'll at least give it a good old college try, see how it looks, see, see if we can make it look any better. So I'm not gonna say that it fixed it because it definitely didn't. But what I will say is that in terms of the way that it looks, it's not nearly as like, um, like separated and crackly. It still looks dry, don't get me wrong, but it definitely helped kind of like buff the cracks together. Does that make sense? Is that even a real thing? All right, now from here, we're just gonna let the skin be what it is, okay? We're just gonna, we're gonna let her thrive her little wrinkly ass life. And we're gonna move on to mascara because you guys know testing mascara is just like where my heart and soul is. And this is a brand new one from Wet n Wild. I picked it up at Walgreens when I picked up that, um, that new palette. And this is their new Big Papa Mascara. And it says on here, you are going to get bigger, I'm sorry, get bigger volume, bigger lift, bigger thickness, and a bigger impact. And this has 500 plus crimped bristles that catch every single lash. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and work this through the lashes. I'll probably build up the coats as I go because that's how I do mascara. And we will check back on here in a bit. And all right, beautiful people, with that, I am back. I did go ahead and just finish up my face really quick with not only the new mascara, but also a new lip from Milani. And so I'm gonna go ahead, let's throw up the up close that way you guys can see how everything is looking. And I think as far as the wrap up goes, I'll actually start off with the Wet n Wild Big Papa Mascara because I'm actually pretty impressed with this. I think that it does a beautiful job, um, as it said in the description of it, really lifting and lengthening the lashes. It does a great, great job too at catching each lash. Like when it said that in the description, I was a little bit skeptical, but I can definitely tell with this mascara that you are going to get every single lash. And doing so too with that, it kind of gives them like a very full appearance. So if you're someone like me that has struggled with lashes, they look a little sparse or they're kind of short, this is definitely a nice individualizing mascara. From there, even as I went through and kind of built it up, I noticed that it did build nicely. It's not the most like thickening or, you know, uh, full mascara as far as building on itself goes, but in terms of like layering, getting that nice individualized lengthening look, I'm actually very impressed. I love the wand on this and I would definitely use it again. And I think the only thing, like if I were to use it with other things, um, the only thing I would do is maybe use this as a base coat to get all the lashes to be nice and, you know, separated and then go in with something that has more of a thickness, more of like a bulky feel to it. But uh, as far as it being a drugstore mascara, I'm actually pretty impressed. After I was done with mascara, like I mentioned, I went in with a new lipstick. This is from Milani, and I can't figure out, it doesn't say like anywhere on the packaging what it is, so I'll have that figured out, and I'll link it down below. But I saw this when I was also in Walgreens, and I'm wearing it in the shade 220 Tied Up. And what initially caught me, I did pick it up in two colors. This one I haven't opened yet. But what initially caught me with this was actually the packaging. It has so many beautiful like riveting features to it the, the light just catches it really beautifully and so I decided to go with this one for today's look because it was the deeper color there's just a swatch of it and with this one what I really liked is that um, it was more of like a hydrating look I just can't remember what it was called but it's like a hydrating almost balmy kind of consistency and today when I went in with this I used it just by itself so I could see the color the application and all of that but I do think in the future because it's so slippy and it just has so much movement to it um, I definitely think I would use this over top of a lip liner in the future just to, you know, not only stop it from feathering, because I can tell this is definitely the consistency that's going to feather, um, but I would also use a lip liner just for structure to help keep it, you know, a little bit more in the bounds, keep it on a little bit longer. Then as far as everything else goes, obviously I want to give you guys a little bit of a wrap up. And I think for me, I definitely had some hits, some misses, and just a couple of things that really don't jive like with my skin specifically. And so unfortunately, I think to start that part of it off, I would have to 
say that that Milani Glow, the tinted stuff, um, this for me is not really mixing well with my skin, like with how I have to set it. But I will reserve the right to change my mind on that because I'm going to test it with a different foundation powder and see if maybe there's movement there. Like it could just be that this one and the L'Oreal foundation powder, those might not work together and that's totally fine. Um, so I'm going to see if maybe I can test it out different ways, you know, test it with different foundation powders and stuff like that and uh, see if I can make it work. But as of right now, um, I'm not a big fan of the way that my skin is looking and I think it's probably a combination between this and the Light Illusion Concealer, which I think for me with that one, the Light Illusion Concealer is really beautiful. It has a great coverage. It looks amazing on the skin. But uh, for me, especially like up under the eyes, I will definitely not be able to use it there. It separates really badly on me. And um, so I think what I'll do with that one is maybe use it like all over the face, testing it out in that way, seeing if it's something maybe it would work better for my skin, not so much for the under eye sort of thing. But I'll have to play around with both of those and let you guys know a little bit more later. Oh, and by the way, too, the L'Oreal foundation powder, um, that one I've been working with for a little while now. I actually have it linked. Do I? Yeah, because you get it on Amazon. And for those of you that don't know, by the way, I have my own Amazon like storefront now where all of my favorites are. If you ever want to shop it, I have that link down below too. Um, but I've had that in there for a while now just because I've been playing with it. And I'm still not 100% sure. I'm in the process of comparing it like side by side to other foundation powders I use. So I will keep you guys posted on that. And like I said, it's in the Amazon storefront. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check it out. But I think that that's it as far as my thoughts and opinions go. If I have anything else to add, of course, I'll just leave them either in a pinned comment or in the description box, something like that. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you like the video? What about the products? Do you love drugstore? Um, or have you tried any of these? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Kind of give me your full rounded out thoughts and opinions on that. You can subscribe, turn on your post notifications. You can follow me on Instagram, all of which I would greatly, greatly appreciate. And I think that that's everything. Again, if I think of anything else, I'll leave it down below. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey, why am I so sweaty, sweaty, sweaty? I'm like a Yeti, 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 cause I'm so sweaty. My God, Paige, stop right now. This isn't a nursery rhyme, okay? Calm down. Wow, I literally couldn't read that word if my life depended on it. Triethosoxylabalane. <laughs> That's cyoxylabalabalane. <laughs> yeah. He may not be a movie star, but when it comes to being happy, we are. There's not a man today who could take me away from my God. Give me some of that deep shoulder action. There's not a man today who could take me away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody that follows me on Instagram, by the way, I was watching Sister Act 1 and 2 um, over Christmas slash Christmas Eve, and I have it all stuck in my head. Like, all two movies, all four hours or whatever that is, it is all right here. Those are two of my favorite movies of all time. Mala Gluga, Huga Luga, <laughs> I do the Hokey Pokey, Methicone, Capricorn, Cap Capricorn Methicone, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Cap, Cap, it has uh, Capricorn methicone in it. If you, if you didn't know what that is, it's a very special thing. Joyful, joyful, Lord, we adore thee. And in my life, I put none before thee. And since I was a youngster, I came to know that you was the only way to go. And I don't know the rest, because that's all I ever learned. <laughs> Let's open up these baggies, these little baggies, these little baggy bags. Um, why you scrape me, you devil? If you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention, yeah, yeah. I added that, yeah, yeah. I don't think they do that in the movie. I, just, I added that just for myself. I needed my own flair on a classic. <laughs>